podcasting from the Chicagoland area. This is Game On with Jackson Stewart, where we discuss men's lifestyle, focusing on sex, fitness, relationships, business, and more. We'll be interviewing the best of the best, the hot shots, and the rising stars in the worlds of modeling, fitness, cooking, and more. Influencers who are discussing keeping it sexy while at the top of their game. I'm your host, Jackson Stewart. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the game. This is Risqué. Hey guys, what's up? This is Teddy, a.k.a. Teddy's in the Mix. And you're listening to Game On with Jackson Stewart. If you don't know, now you know, my man. Jackson Stewart, Game On Podcast. Make sure you tune in, take some notes, but most of all, it's a good time. You're going to learn something, and you're going to learn today. Shout out to my man. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. Holding court. We've all seen it. The old movies where the king would enter the room or be sitting in the royal hall and people would gather around and listen to his every word, laugh at his jokes, and generally have a good time. That is holding court. And there are players of the game who hold court better than any kings of old. But how do they do it? How do they enter a spot and run a room in a matter of minutes? Well, it's not because they are royalty. It's because they are using a set of precise but simple tactics to hold court. And now, with this episode, you can too. So what is holding court? I have a friend, <coughs> excuse me, and he can roll into any spot, anywhere, regardless of color or gender or political affiliation or or religious background, etc. You could drop this cat anywhere and within five minutes, he'll have a crowd around him. And it might be the wait staff or the waitress, the manager, the host, um, a group of our friends, if I'm with them, a group of strangers strangers who are now friends and, and they sit with this guy. And they wait on his every word and as he tells story after story. And he's, he's not the best looking guy. I mean, he's, <laughs> hey, I'm not insulting him, but he's, he's pretty short. And he would describe himself as stout. And, and he's older, but, but this motherfucker can pull a room like a dentist without glasses. I mean, he's just got that pull. He holds court. And how does he do it? He can establish rapport with people in a very fast manner that allows him to converse and keep people in his immediate sphere of influence. Kings would hold court because of their title, because people were scared of him. And this cat is not a king, but people orbit him like he is, like he is royalty. So why should you hold court? Well, holding court has its perks. Um, First off, attention. Who doesn't like people hanging on their every word, showing them respect, et cetera. And it's not, it's not out of, you know, devious intent or, uh, you know, to inflate one's ego, but it's good, healthy, positive attention. You get your needs met quick. Um, you know, when you're holding court and you've got the, the, the staff of the establishment of the bar, the club, whatever, also engaging you, your drinks are going to come out faster. Your food's going to come out better and so on. So uh, when you're holding court, you can almost bet even money that you'll get what you want faster and better than others. Networking. Holding court brings all types of individuals to your table and into your world. You make amazing connections in all parts of life as you sit down and hold court. Um, and that networking is a beautiful thing, especially when you're sitting there and you've got, um, cause I've learned and I can hold court. Uh, I'm very good at conversation. I got a podcast and I interview people, but I have held court and I have looked around and, you know, because I know all the players in, in this situation, I'll sit there and I'm thinking, I got a lawyer, I got a plumber, I got a, I got an architect, I got an engineer. I got a doctor right there. I got three nurses. I got a a stripper, a bartender. I mean, whatever the makeup is, 
you, you've got a little network. You've got a little microcosm of people from all, our, all walks of life, excuse me. Um, now, you're going to say Jackson holding court sounds like it's freaking awesome. Uh, I want to hold court everywhere I go. I go to the gas station. I want to hold court. I go to the supermarket. Jackson taught me how to hold court. There are times when you should not attempt to hold court. And if it's the wrong time, you trying to hold court is going to make you look like a big old jackass. So what are some wrong times to try and, and, and have people orbit you, create an environment where people want to hang around and, and talk with you? Well, any event that is somber is a bad time to try and hold court, like a funeral. You have no business trying to become a center of attention at a funeral. Um, it's, it's just not, that, that's bad form, as I like to say. It's just not the spot to do it. Now, you can be a, a lightning rod to help. And holding court is essentially making yourself like a lightning rod, attracting people to you. At, at a somber event, like a funeral, you can offer yourself to help out. And you can take some of the uh, stressors or some of the uh, needed tasks or details that have to be um, completed at this funeral. You can take those on. In that sense, you are becoming a lightning rod. But that's, that's a lot different than sitting there and telling jokes and, and weaving uh, stories and tales. A wedding. Not somber, <laughs> but... It's an event where attention should be elsewhere. Like you should not be trying to hold court at, at somebody's birthday party because the attention belongs on the, the birthday person, not on your ass. Uh, the wedding, the attention belongs on the bride and the groom, not on you. Now at a reception, you know, at your table, you can hold court and that's different, but you got to be able to give it up. And that's an important, uh, important aspect. It's an important responsibility for once you start to draw people in, that you got to be able to know when to do it, when not to do it, and when to release it if, if the time calls for it. So, we, you know, what is holding court and, and why, when should you do it and why shouldn't you do it? But let's be honest, you came here for the steps. And I've got eight steps for holding court and they might sound um laborious and complicated and oh man jack eight steps shit that's a lot not even because you'd be surprised how many of these are just common sense and how many of them just take a little bit of tweaking for you to just make it part of who you are so one key aspect of holding court and this isn't one of the steps but it's you got to have fun when you do it if you go in there with a sheet of paper, <laughs> or you got these steps in your head and you're going, now I'm doing step four, now I'm doing step five, it's not going to work. Holding court has got to be fun because you've got to be able to feel the energy of a room. You've got to be able to, to read, the, read the spot, read the audience, get the lay of it. Um, you know, one of the keys is that you can connect with people. And you can't connect with people unless you are open to reading them. Um, some jokes you might make ain't going to fly if you don't read the room, don't read the audience. Uh, some methods of communicating with people ain't going to work if you don't read the person you're about to try and talk to. Perfect example. Um, I had just wrapped up a, a, a business gig. I was very happy about it. Some friends said, hey, Jack, let's go hang out. I said, cool. We rolled into a, a restaurant I'd never been to before. and Waitress comes over and, you know, she's, she's cool and she's by the book and everything. And she asked a question and I, I made a joke and it was a joke that could have possibly just, just, you know, soared like a lead balloon. It could just, just boom, just hit the ground. But I, I read her, I read her energy, the look on her face, just the whole vibe. And she thought probably <laughs> rightfully so or wrongfully so that was the funniest guy she'd ever met. And it loosened up the whole night. And next thing you know, she was hanging with us. She was sitting with us. 
you know, managers came over and they were hanging with us and, you know, drinks started flowing and food was good. And, you know, some hookups happened. And I'm not going to say if I was one of them, I'm not going to say if I wasn't, but you got to be able to just read people. And in order to read people, you have to open yourself up. So location, 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 step number one, or rule one or step. These are, these aren't in any particular order, but you can take them however you want. But number one, location, location, location. Never hold court without getting good seating. You should have uh, your back to a wall and you should be able to see all the people that are hanging out around you. So in a sense, it's much like, like, you know, like sitting at a table and you've got people to your left, people to your right, people in the middle, and you can see. You don't want people behind you. It's too damn hard. You got to keep turning around, check on them, talk to them. And that's just a pain in the ass. You want good access to flow of traffic. So if there's a pathway to the bar, a pathway to the kitchen, a uh, pathway to, um, you know, you don't want to be sitting by a door because depending on the weather, you know, the door keeps opening and closing and, and that could, uh, that could throw the energy off. So uh, location is important. Lighting is part of location. You don't want to, you know, I call it the halo effect, right? When you've got people and they're sitting directly in front of a lamp or some type of light and so you can't see them because they look like a damn silhouette but they have that halo around them from the light behind them uh, you don't want that for people you don't want that for you optimal lighting for a location is that it's that warm orange color you know i call it the the starbucks color right it's that uh, that orange woody kind of vibe and it's just I, hell if i know what it is i think it's it's very conducive to atmosphere and ambiance and people communicating and talking. Number two, tell good stories. You cannot put a price tag on a good storyteller. Um, they're so important. When there's a lull in a conversation and you've got somebody there who can tell good stories, they are a lifesaver because you know you could it could be a, a dead ass moment at a party. And you could be like, hey, you know, man, remember that time we were, and then they'll just, and, and, and you know, a good storyteller will be, well, no, shit just died. And they want me to, to spruce up this party a little bit. And they'll jump in without missing beat. They'll be like, oh, hell yeah, man, I remember that party and those girls. And then they'll tell a story. So for you to hold court, you got to tell good stories. And so don't tell stories that aren't true. I mean, yeah. Look, every story, every good story has got a little bit of uh, embellishment, you know, but you're not going to be, um, you know, you're not going to be flat out just lying about stuff. So, you know, tell stories that, that are true mostly. And, um, and please do not tell stories that put anybody down. A, a little bit of self-deprecating humor thrown here and there is good for measure, uh, but it's careful balance. You know, too many jokes or humor at your own expense, and you look sorrowful. You look like, you're like shit, man, this guy's just pathetic. And, and you don't want that. Good stories with a little dash of, you know, something you did stupid or a truthful mistake or, or whatever it is, it humanizes you and it invites people in. I remember once I was at a, I was at a party. I, I, I was a rookie. I was young, didn't know anything. Not to say I'm, not saying I know much now, but I, I know enough by now um, to get by. And I'm still learning. And I remember seeing this guy, and he was just, he was like the center of attention in this room. And, and just at that point, like, it just felt like this guy was, was something that just wasn't even human, you know? And I just watched him just bring people in, and people were talking to him and hanging out with him. And, but then I started to hear him tell stories that were funny about, you know, dumb stuff he had done or, or whatever, or dumb things that happened to him. I, I was laughing from afar, kind of like, oh, man, that's crazy. Like, that happened to him, too. Like, that happened to me once. And I found myself getting closer and closer to, like, his, his court, his little pocket of the universe. Next time I was hanging out with him, and, and we had a damn good night. And it was his stories were disarming. They were, they were charismatic, but they didn't make me, they didn't intimidate me. They didn't scare me. 
that they made him seem like he was just, you know, an average guy, but he was just cool as hell. And that's what stories that you tell were just a dash of some stupid stuff you've done. That's what it, it will do. And, um, you know, so, and sometimes people don't want to join your court because they're, they're mean mugging you, you know, they're, they're MFing you from afar, like, oh, you know, who's this motherfucker think they are and whatnot. But they're really just envious. They're jealous. They're intimidated. And when they start to hear you talk and, and laugh and tell stories and they start to realize like, man, this guy isn't full of himself. He's just cool as hell. And next, you know, you, know, you just want somebody over. The third step and possibly the greatest key to holding court. No, I, 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 I take that back. This is the key to holding court is you have to be sincerely interested in the people you draw in. Hands down, this is key. Being legitimately interested in each person you talk with is the truest step to holding court. You can't, you can't fake the funk. You can't snow a snowman. You can't bullshit this. When you talk to somebody, you have to actually care about what their answer is going to be to the question you are posing to them. Um, I was at a strip club once and I was there with some buddies and I had been there before a couple of times and, and the guy at the door somehow we were um i overheard him mention his son or having having a son and and you know the guys the guys are with me and they were just trying to like show their id and, and pay to get in and whatnot and um and i say hey uh i say you you, you got a son and he, and then that was a gamble, right? Because people would kind of get tested about their family. He could be like, hey, you know, that's personal. Mind your business. And I said, uh, I saw you got a son. I said, that's cool. So right there, he knew that I wasn't trying to like, you know, dog him out, rag on his family. I said, you got a son. That's cool. And he goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, yeah, I got a little boy. He's like whatever the kid was, like 11 or something. I said, that's cool. I said, okay. I said, well, you know what? I said, hey, man, props to you. You know, it's good to see a guy being a good dad, taking care of his boy, you know, big ups. And that was it. I didn't pry, didn't ask anything. And this guy opened up, talked about, he's like, yeah, you know, some, I can't, I think his son was sick or something. And he opened up and he was, here's the thing though. I legitimately meant what I said. I legitimately did give him props because he was, he was being a man and taking care of his kid. And, and we talked and every time like that night when I'd see him and we talked and, you know, his kid would pop up. You could tell like nobody gave a rat's ass about this guy except to look at the ID and, and you know, pay the, the cover. And so by the end of the night, like I had, <laughs> I had my own security guard and he, he slid me like, like four VIP passes. He's like, Hey man, next time you roll back through, show these, we'll take care of you. It was nice meeting you, Jack. And I was like, yeah, man, you know, it was cool. And he's like, all right, you know, Jackson, take care of yourself. I said, yeah, man, you too. And, and every time I saw him after that, we, he remembered me. Um, and I, I really did mean that. And I've, I've done that with multiple people. And usually what I will find is something that's very obvious, but most people overlook. So another example, I, I love jewelry. Like, I, I don't wear a lot of jewelry, but I, I beautiful jewelry stands out to me. And I was, uh, I was at a bar, and a bartender was waiting on me, and, and um, he had this really cool chain on. And he's like, hey, what can I get you? And I was like, well, you know, and here's something else, too. I always start off with, hey, how are you? Like, I was like, first of all, how you doing? Like, I'm not going to be a dick just trying to ram my order down their throat. And, you know, I'm trying to be polite, and I mean it. And... You know, he's taking my order, and I'm like, "All right, cool. Let me get a. I don't know. It's like, let me let me get a whiskey sour." And I say, "Hey, man. By the way, nice chain. I like that." And he opened up. And he's like, "Oh, really? Like I bought this here, and he, you know, and we were talking about chain and jewelry, and some friends were with me. They're like, oh, how do you do that?'" And I'm like, "Because I legitimately dig this guy's fashion right there. The chain is tight." And so, you know, I can go on and on about that, but you got to sincerely. Be interested in the people that you talk to. That's how you draw people in. And think about it in, in your own life. You know, we're, we're so damn busy and fast and worried and anxious and hectic that, hey, how you doing? Good morning. You know, how was your night? How was your weekend? 
they're like rhetorical questions now. You know, we just we just throw them out there as just like um, uh, habit. We don't actually think about it. We don't actually mean it. But think about when somebody actually took their time. I was like, no, man, really, like, how was your night last night? How was your weekend? Or if somebody remembers something about you, like, hey, man, I heard your dad was sick. How's he been? Or, uh, yeah, so you got a new car out there. Tell me about, like, is, is that the model? Is that, is that the model you want? Is that, like, the dream car? Like, when people have invested five minutes in you and walked away, you feel like a damn king. And you remembered that person. And then you sought probably that person out. Like, it was, you were just drawn to them because they were cool. So you can now do that to people. And that's key to holding court. Uh, people go places. People sit with people. People hang out with people deeply when they feel cared about, listened to, and enjoyed. Number four, know when to leave a spy. Uh, a wise friend of mine, long time ago, taught me a rule. Always leave when they're asking you, asking you to stay. Don't stay until they ask you to leave. Never overstay your welcome. Because then you become that guy who's like, oh, here's this son of a bitch telling long stories all night. Doesn't know when to, you know, close up shop. Can't read when I'm trying to, like, uh, you know, close the bar or, or, or you know, end the party or, or the dinner or whatever. I always like to bug out when things are at their peak. Um, you know, when the laughs are at their best, when the food is just finished. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to stiff anybody with the bill or anything, but like there's a moment that, you know, like this is as good as the night's going to get. Let it dip a second and then go, all right, cool. People, you've been real. I'm out. Make your goodbyes quick. Make them sincere and heartfelt. You know, I like the, uh, for the fellas, like like the handshake and the, the pull and hug or the hand over handshake or the ladies, uh, uh, you know, a softer handshake, maybe a, a, a holding of the hand, a kiss in the cheek if I know them real well, et cetera. And then I'm out. And so when people are always like, oh, Jackson, come on, man, stay for another round, whatever. It's like, nah, I got to go. Why, why you got to go? You always say I, I got business. Because you don't want to be... You don't want to just be that, oh, he's still here. You, no, you don't want to be that. Holding court is, uh, you know, in addition to being about sincerity, it's also about like, it's also about being, you know, like uh, supply and demand. Like you want to leave them wanting more. You know, you don't want them to be burned out by your ass. You want them to be like, man, I can't get enough of this cat. He needs to roll through more often. That's key. Keep everything above board. Never hold court to get over on somebody, to abuse somebody, to manipulate or to gain. Like, yeah, you might, you know, you might be holding court and you're like, oh, snap. Like this person just rolled in through and I've been trying to holler at this girl or, or holler at this woman, this, this young lady or, or talk to this person about a job. But, but don't, set up, don't set up the environment just to try and get some kind of advantage over somebody. Um, just kind of organically let things just become what they're going to become holding court only works when everybody is having a good time and enjoys the moment so you can't be holding court with like nefarious intentions you can't be sitting there like oh man if i can manip manipulate this person i'll get what i really want nah man the goal should be to have a good time and everybody have a good time uh now i have held court and you know <laughs> buddy of mine once was like hey man Look at those girls over there, you know? And I was like, damn, look at those girls over there. And he's like, you think you can pull them into our table? And I was like, damn, sure I can pull them into our table. And he's like, no, nah, you can't do that. And I said, hold on a second. And sure enough, five minutes later, I, I had him at the table we were sitting at, and we were just having a good time. I wasn't trying to abuse my holding court ability, but uh, I just added to our environment, and we had a good time. No offenses, uh, number six. Watch any type of humor that insults a group. Don't discuss politics, religion, sexual orientation, etc. Uh, your court, playa, <laughs> playa, playa, is only a true court if there's room for everybody, as long as they're not offenders, to feel welcome. So I don't give a rat's ass if you're Republican, Democrat, uh, Libertarian, Independent, Gay, Straight, um, Black, White, Purple, Green, 
polka dot, whatever you are, you're holding court. You can't be sitting there going, well, you know, those stupid whatever, or you hear the joke about the who did the, no, that, that's not holding court. Um, that's a rally. And we're not having a rally. We're trying to have a cool, chill moment where everybody feels included, where everybody can just relax and have a good time, just unplug for a bit and just vibe and enjoy themselves with you as, you know, possibly possibly a little bit of center of attention, maybe the, you know, the head leader, the ringmaster, whatever. Number seven, be both cocky and self-deprecating. And when I talked about this back with step number two about telling good stories, but you, you know, you got to, you got to let your freak flag fly. You got to be a little bold. You got to be a little cocky, a little arrogant, a little arrogant, um, but not in the sense of putting people down. You got to go in there and know what you know and be confident. You know, you know, you walked in there and you look good. You are dressed well. You have a great sense of humor. You are a good conversationalist. You are a fine as wine and sexy as hell. And, you know, <laughs> You're posing and closing, you're maxing and relaxing and um, chilling like a villain. Or as I heard from somebody very recently, you are in there uh, kissing necks and, and cashing checks. <laughs> but I, you got to have that. You got you to gotta have that, you know, your chest out a little bit and you got to be confident and you got to be funny. And at the same time, you can be confident and be well aware of your shortcomings and be able to tell stories about how you did some dumb shit. You can be both those things. And that's a, you want to talk about sexy? That is a sexy uh, mode to be in. Lastly, but a very important number eight is connect people or connecting people is a key aspect of holding court. Because there are times, hold on, cause I'm gonna take a drink. Oh man, I don't know how loud that was, but damn. And that was that was good bourbon. <laughs> uh, there are times when I've held court, and I heard that person A was looking for a job, and person B, who was at the other end of the table, was looking to hire somebody like person A, and we made the connection. You know, it was subtle. It was like at the end of the night, I was like, "Hey, man, like real quick." Um, and my boy over here is leaving, but I heard you were looking for. Uh, an engineer, he's an engineer, you guys should go talk real quick. Or there's been times when, you know, single person one got matched up with single person two. Um, don't force anything. Let it be organic. But sometimes, you know, a little, little, uh, little bug in the ear, a little, little whisper here and there like, hey, real quick, you know, you're single. That person's single. And it, I've even literally looked at both people at the same time and said, you're single, you're single. You guys should go hook up, go talk, you know, get the hell, get the hell away from the table. Don't come back to something's going down. Um, <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but most of the time it works out cool. And friendships, partnerships, businesses can all start in your court. And what that does for you, you know, besides make you feel good because you just helped out people, uh, it, it heightens the level of the game that you play at. So... Now your court's not just like, oh, yeah, we, we, you know, we hung out with Jackson and had a good time and it was funny. But now it's like, shit, man, we sat with Jack and so-and-so got hired and so-and-so was like engaged or, or is dating that, that fine ass person. And so now it's like, you know, you carry this atmosphere of being a mover and shaker. Like you make things go down. Let people meet and fan those flames with side conversations if the moment presents itself. If you get the feeling that this ain't gonna work, don't force it. You, you, like I said, hold in court, you gotta read the room, you gotta know the energy, you gotta respect the room, and um, you just kinda let things do what they do. So that is how you hold court. It's an art, and sometimes it ain't gonna work. But holding court is about connecting with people and in turn connecting them to each other. Good people, sexy people. That wraps up our show. Follow me on Instagram at JacksonStewart2 and on Twitter at JacksonStewart01. Keep up with the show at www.gameoutwithjack.com and we'll see you next week. Until then... 
Keep it sexy and game on.